This is a problem. Every year I tend to do a project, mainly as a thank you for a lot of the realtors that I deal with in my day job as a mortgage broker. And I finally have hit the limit on how many charcuterie boards that I could actually make. So this year we decided to make these serving paddles out of just some of the various scrap wood that I had, as well as some other wood that I was able to pick up just before Christmas. And yeah, I said Christmas and uh, welcome to April. So saying that I'm behind my video schedule is a wee bit of an understatement. Now, if you're on Instagram, you probably know Luke in the garage. He's actually the one that gave me the idea to do these paddles. He had made a bunch a couple months ago. Well, couple months before December and I saw that he had made these and reached out to him to be able to get the template for making them. Like a lot of projects, this one's made up of several small steps and the first step I had to go through after roughing out and sorting out all the material that I had was to mill everything to the same thickness. Now you might have noticed this but Aaron's been in a lot more of the videos lately, and truly, this is kind of the recurring theme that we're gonna see more of. Aaron's found a couple projects and things that she wants to do on the channel, so we'll be working together to teach her some new skills, but as well, build some of the things that are more centered around what she wants to learn how to do and projects that she specifically wants to build. I'm really excited about this dynamic. It's been a lot of fun. We actually as well went through a big change with our day jobs and our mortgage business, and we've been spending a lot more time together. So it's been a lot more fun having this as well as something for us to do. After I got everything down to the same thickness, I went over the joiner and I just made sure I had one good edge. A lot of the stuff was cutoffs, so some of the edges were a little wild. I think it was about two years ago that I changed out to a helical head on my joiner. And man, it makes a huge difference, not only in the finish, but as well just in the amount of noise it uh, no longer makes. I want to make about 12 of these boards. So as I was going through the process of milling up all my material, I was also starting the process of gluing everything up. The widths actually became a lot more chaotic as well. And I mean that in a good way. I found that just using, I think this is one and a half inch strips for all the boards, it just looked too uniform. And you'll see kind of as this video goes on that the pattern becomes a lot more chaotic. And I think those were some of my favorite boards out of the batch. In total, milling up the materials, I think it was two or three evenings. And as far as gluing up all the blanks, I think it was a solid week and a half, just going back and forth. I actually did it in such a way where I'd be gluing up a board in the evening, I'd go outside first thing in the morning and take that one out of clamps, and then come back after work, glue up another, and I just kept repeating that pattern for a few days. And at first I was only gluing up two sides because I thought it'd be a lot straighter and a lot easier to glue up the two sides kind of in one glue up and then attach two sides together to make up the final board. I think in this one, you can see I actually glued up the handle separately as well. Uh, that was an absolute waste of time. Eventually I just went and I started gluing up everything in one section. It was just taking way too long doing it this way. And also because I spent the extra time joining all my pieces and making sure it was all the same thickness, I really didn't even need to do that. The glue joints on this were absolutely immaculate and came together really well with all the glue ups that I did. I think this was the first Saturday that I was working on these and I had a couple of my boards and clamps so I decided it was time to cut out the template. So like I said, I got this template from Luke in the garage and I just cut it out on my six carb CNC. I did chat a little bit with Luke about this actual template and if this is something you would like to build yourself, uh, just make sure you comment below and uh, Luke will most likely have this template available on his Etsy store so you could go there and download that. I did use the CA glue and blue tape trick, well, green tape trick in this instance to tape this down and uh, it held it really well. I did hold it at the end only because it was popping up a little bit. And here's a good example of one of the more chaotic boards that I did. Oh. Yeah, and there's another example of one. Like I said, there was a lot of back and forth. 
And as I was doing one operation to, you know, glue up a board or in actually at one point mill up more material because I ran out of material, you know, I was just flipping back and forth, just making sure I was as efficient with my time as I could be. You know, and I find that in a lot of the woodworking process that I go through, I do tend to break things down into smaller processes. And uh, for me, I find that it's just a way more efficient way to, number one, just digest the work that needs to happen. But number two, just to be as efficient with my time as I can be. <laughs> as you can see here, I'm actually, this is probably one of my morning sessions because this is me dressed for work, not dressed to be in the shop. I think this was now the second Saturday and it was getting close to Christmas. So I was getting into a bit of a time crunch on what I had to do. So any delays at this point would have just thrown the whole process right off. Uh, my drum sander broke. Uh, I don't know what to do. So you know how they say things happen in threes? Well, keep that in mind for the rest of the video. Anyways, it turns out it's the motor in the drum sander that went. So I really was not in the position to try and fix this, nor was I in the position to find a new motor on short notice. So I cut everything down to just under 13 and a half inches, just so it fit through my planer. And ironically, I actually scaled the template after I got it from Luke, specifically so people that had this planer would be able to do this without having a drum sander. So I guess past Chris was thinking about future Chris's demise. Probably the tool I'm most cautious of in the shop is the router and specifically the router table. I made sure when I did these templates that I cut as close to my line as I could over on the bandsaw so I would have as little material as possible to take off as I was doing the routing with the pattern. And the reality is I really truly could have just done this all on the bandsaw and not even had to worry about doing anything over at the router table. Uh, I was struggling a little bit with this blade. For whatever reason, it was, I guess, duller than I, I had remembered. And I was finding that I was pushing the material through a little bit more than I had to. You, you can see that I keep doing the move where I'm pushing in and backing off. And, and there's probably a good reason for that. But I kept working on anyways. This was taking longer than I thought it would have. Uh, again, mainly because this blade just wasn't cutting very well. And I just thought to pass the time a little bit more, I'd move the camera around a little bit more, just to hopefully try and get a little bit more cinematic of a look to this whole section of the video. Well, if you're counting, that was the second thing that went wrong. Anyways, after a quick trip to the store to grab a blade and some McDonald's to ease my pain, I was back at it, getting the last of the templates cut out. Amazingly, this new blade cut way better than the first. Weird. Anyways, uh, I'm just using this top bearing bit from Bits and Bits just to get the rough shape. Um, I'll put a link to this bit below. Uh, also, if you are looking at anything from Bits to Bits, I do have a discount coupon that you can use. Um, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of using a router like this. Uh, I did have a couple that actually kicked back on me. And uh, I mean, as you can see, I'm keeping my hands really far away from the router. And there are a couple of jigs that you can get that do help with this. Uh, a lot of the small piece jigs. And I, I do recommend that you use those. If you are doing this project, or really any project where you're using a pattern routing bit, I really, really can't emphasize enough just to get as close to your line as possible before going over to the router. You really are just cleaning up your line on this and trying not to break the template. Okay, that's three things. I guess I got a little bit carried away with the two-sided tape, so I thought because of just the thin material I was using, I actually reinforced the template on the second go around. And this one made it through the whole process, if you can believe it. But you can also see here just the excessive amount of two-sided tape I was using at the beginning. And the reality is, as I went through it, I was using less and less and less because the pattern wasn't going anywhere. Uh, I think I had one in each corner and then two on the handle. So, I mean, that's six pieces versus the 67 you just saw me do. 
the back of the handle here was probably the scariest part of this process. Uh, this is where I did actually have some, uh, uh, you know, some some catching of the bit. And for two big reasons. Number one, it's a really tight radius. Uh, you can see here that it's really hard to support that whole back end. And the biggest part is that is end grain. So please be careful when you're doing that. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable doing operations like this, I strongly suggest figuring a workaround. Hey, if you have suggestions for workarounds for stuff like that, definitely make sure you comment those below because people that are watching this video will definitely find that valuable. Getting closer to the end of the process, I, I did a little bit of epoxy filling, but I also wanted to put just a 45 degree chamfer all the way around the paddle section of these boards. Uh, I was taking very, very, very light passes because this bit is not a very high quality bit. You'll notice, and as I've said before, all the bits I use are bits and bits, and they are very high quality carbide blade. These red bits, which will go unnamed, I find I have more issues with them. So I was taking the smallest pass possible uh, just to make sure I wasn't blowing anything out. And you can see this handle. This is an example of one where it actually caught on the back. So it doesn't have that little bulbous round end to it because I had to sand that back. I will say if you have made it through the calamity of this video so far, and I have earned it, I would love to see you subscribe. Uh, I've had a lot of views lately more so on the motorcycle content that I've been doing, but I, I really can't emphasize enough that I want to be doing just as much woodworking content as I am content about the motorcycle builds. This is part of, uh, you know, doing more work with Aaron, but also doing more builds that are more, I guess, broad in the amount of interests and things that I do. So if I have earned it, I'd love to see you hit that subscribe button. And like I said before, I was just doing the 45 degree chamfer around the paddle end. On the handle, we did the rounded end and Erin actually had so much fun with this, but she shaped everything just where it blended together uh, and made a really nice detail uh, between where I guess the handle and the paddle meet. And we all dislike sanding, but I think there's the part of us that when we first start sanding, uh, we're having fun with it because you're starting to see things start to take shape. And fortunately, this is kind of the stage in Erin's woodworking learning where she's at. She loves sanding. She loves the transformation and she's an absolute perfectionist. So uh, it's really cool to see just the work that she does. And, and you can see here that we're grain popping these as well. Uh, this just lifts it up because of course these are going to be used and washed. So the first time someone that receives one of these puts it in the sink, all that grain is going to stand up on ends. So we just take care of that beforehand. And now I'm just coming back and I'm just hand sanding with 400. And I'll tell you, these boards were so incredibly smooth. We sand them higher than we have on a lot of projects and they just turned out so beautiful. Now everyone's favorite part, obviously the finishing. Can you name all the woods on here though? <laughs> we're just dipping all of these into the mineral oil. Uh, they soak in there for a little bit and then puts them on the drying rack just so we can drip off as much as possible. And then after that's done, we apply a coat of the wood honey from Total Boat. The mineral oil just helps penetrate and seal the boards. And of course the wood honey helps for conditioning and just helps give it that long life. Uh, we use wood honey on all of our cutting boards now. We used to make our own oil, but we just find that the wood honey is just a lot better consistency. It just spreads better and it is in a way cooler bottle than the stuff that we were making. If you haven't tried it out yet, again, like I've got a discount code below for uh, anything from Total Boat as well. So you can check that out. And of course that's an affiliate link so that does help this channel grow that is if you i guess do want to see this channel grow <laughs> anyways i felt it very appropriate that the b-roll for this video i would make a pizza with the pizza battle the one thing i think i would change if i did this again and i've seen other people do this since is to add more of a bevel on that front edge uh, the front edge when you're sliding the pizza off the front is a little steep, but I mean, I honestly believe that a lot of people that have received these and will receive these as gifts are going to use them more as serving boards uh, for, you know, like a charcuterie board or uh, something more on display as opposed to using them 
as a pizza paddle. And I'm okay with that. It's one of those things when you give someone a gift like this, at that point, it's out of your hands if they use it the way you would intend it to. But it just feels good to be able to give someone something that you know you you invested your time and and obviously your your effort into and your skill into. Again, if you did want to build one of these boards, definitely make a comment below. And as soon as it's ready, uh, I'll make sure to add the link for Luke's uh, Etsy page so you can go download the template and make these for yourself. As always, I really do appreciate you checking out the video and following along on this journey. We've got lots more coming down the pipe. We have uh, another five videos that are half edited and ready to go. So expect those in the next little while. And if you need something to tie you over, I've queued up a couple here that you can check out in the meantime. Anyways, thanks for watching this video and we'll see you on the next build.